In this learning module, we're going to take a look at enterprise integration patterns with queues. This is a very timely topic, and it really fits well to go back to something we talked about early on, which is what are microservices. If we take a look here, this is a presentation that I gave in an earlier learning module, and we talked about how microservices are things that do one thing and do it well, and can be integrated together. The example I gave back then was the Bureau of Motor Vehicles and all of the endpoints that they have to touch to issue you a driver's license. Make sure you're insured, make sure you don't have any court cases that would prevent you from driving, make sure you're a legal state resident, see if you want to be an organ donor, so on and so forth. So this was a big picture we painted at the very beginning of this class. Now, let's consider what this is going to look like uh, with our presentation and our course material for this session. I've created a Visio diagram that represents our application to this point and what we're adding in this learning module. So we have an external entity, Plant Places, which is providing us a JSON stream of plants, the scientific definition of plants, as well as a unique identifier. Now, throughout this course, we've been building up this microservice here, which collects specimens for a plant diary for, say, a user's landscape or something like that. We have a microservice, but traditional three-tier three -tier approach with the DAO, the service layer, and then the controller layer, or the UI layer, if you wish, and the presentation layer on top of that. Uh, and we have a traditional relational database under the covers. What we're going to build in this learning module is another microservice, which just handles resizing and watermarking images. And our first service, where the user has some interaction, is going to upload a photo, post a photo, uh, that will go onto a queue. And the queue is the golden nail that holds these applications together. So in other words, this application we've been working on to date is a producer, which is going to put something onto the queue. The application we're going to write in this learning module is a very lightweight application that is what's called a JMS application, uh, Java messaging service. So it essentially falls asleep until something is added to this queue. Then it wakes up and it processes that queue, the information on that queue. I can show you a quick demonstration of this. So if we take a look at our virtual machine, I'm going to end up with two different projects. The Plant Places project we've been working on so far, and then the Plant Places post processor, which is this image resizer. I have them both running now in debug mode. We see I can go to the uh, page that we've been working on all semester, put in some data and say a nice uh, leaf, for example. Plant name, we'll call this one, uh, we'll call it um, Mahonia Confusa. I don't think I've done one of those yet. Now I'm going to pick a file, any old file here. This one will be fine, although that's not a Mahonia. Let's grab Mahonia 5 right here. And I'm going to choose Upload. You'll see that Eclipse is going to kick off and say, okay, there's a breakpoint here. And if we take a look, this breakpoint is in the, in the Plant Places application. So before long, what it should do is it should write, one moment, please. There we go. It will write something to our, uh, our queue, our queue, which I mentioned is the golden nail that holds these two applications together. So if we take a look, we see number of pending messages is zero. Number of consumers is one because I've started the post-processor application. Now let's go back to where this breakpoint is, and I'm going to just step over until we get to this convert and send line on line number uh, 35. That'll take just a moment. And we see that after it executes, sure enough, we get number of pending messages equals one, messages in queued equals one, which means that our photo processor application has put something on the queue. And we see the breakpoint has now moved to the next position. So I'm going to tell it to go ahead and resume. Now we get another breakpoint that picks up, but look very carefully at where this breakpoint picks up. It's in a different application. So one moment, I'll try to squeeze this over a little bit so you can see. Maybe easier said than done, but nonetheless, you can see that our normal Plant Places application we've been working on so far is up at the top. No breakpoints there, but now our post processor has fired and we see that this method process photo was fired, which means, hey, I realize that something is on the queue and I need to do something with it. Refresh again, we notice that the numbers haven't changed. The item is still on the queue. So now we're going to step over this logic, and this is going to do a few things. It's going to resize the file. It's also going to put a watermark onto the file. This is where the heavy lifting happens here. So I will go ahead and tell this to resume, and then uh, we'll see, we'll kick it one more time. 
And now we'll come back and take a look at our queue, and you see that the number of messages is now zero, and the messages dequeued is one, which means our downstream processor has successfully been able to pull this item off of the queue and has been able to resize the image. So let's consider a couple of things we're going to need. First of all, uh, what we're going to do story-wise, and then we'll take a look at some videos in our learning module. So this photo post processing, we're essentially going to tackle everything on this story, all the sprint tasks on the story in this learning module. Resize photos, we'll go ahead and move that over to complete. Um, install active MQ, we'll move that to complete. And I think I moved that up a little bit. There we go, moved it to the wrong one. So we'll drag that on down here. Uh, create new Spring Boot program to process our photos. We'll move that to complete. Of course, we would normally put it in progress first. I just want to show you by the end of this learning module, each of these items will be complete. Create watermark, add thumbnail aid or dependency. That's what's going to do a lot of this processing and apply watermark to image. So after this learning, mark, learning module, take a look. Our stories are complete and so are the tasks that we assign to those stories. Let's look at some of the videos that we're going to cover in this learning module. First of all, just a word on what integra enterprise integration patterns are. This is a very much a trending topic right now. Uh, something that you see quite a bit is people just anticipate real-time or near, re near real-time integrations, and also want to consider the handoff from one application to another and how to guarantee delivery from one application to another. Then we'll take a look at how to install ActiveMQ as a service. That was that little web view I showed you earlier where you could see the items that were on a queue and you could see the items that were in queued and dequeued, the number of producers, the number of consumers. So that's a standalone application that has a web management console, which is what we were just looking at. Then we're going to see how our producing program can write something onto the queue and we'll see how our consuming program, the photo processor, can be triggered to read off of that queue. We'll take a look at how to use thumbnail later to resize and watermark an image, and then that'll wrap us up. So this is a very timely learning module, uh, something where I think we can start to see how we can get these different services to work together. So I think you'll enjoy it. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.